you so much, Seth and Donna. It's a pleasure to be here at Start Dev Change. I remember when that very first tweet went out about, you know, is anyone interested in talking about, you know, is career switching and getting into tech? And, and everyone was like, yeah, that sounds like an amazing conference. And here we are. So this is a really exciting moment for all of us. So thank you all for tuning in. I'm coming to you live here from a beautiful day in Boston. I'm here in my office. This is my closet that I retrofitted into my office because my husband teaches right on the other, in the other wall. So if you hear any yelling, that's him. Um, but I'm here to talk to you about something I really enjoy using. I use it all the time. And, and whenever I have to build a website, this is my absolute go-to. And I just want to share this this kind of open secret with you all is how to build a website the easy way using Azure Static Web Apps. And this is a product that came, that came out. Um, it came out at Build last year, so in May, and actually this, this past year, and everybody just went gaga because we were finally, we're a bunch of JavaScript developers and we needed a really clean and easy way to develop our websites on Azure somehow one way or another. And there have been ways in the past, but none was as awesome as this one. So I just want to kind of walk you through how you create your websites now using Azure Static Web Apps if you're a JavaScript developer. So this is the demo actually that I'm going to show you, but I'm going to blow past this and we're going to make an affirmation app. But first I want to talk to you about the architecture of how, um, of how you build these apps. So what are Azure Static Web Apps? Well, let's do a little exploration. Like I said, it's a new, a new-ish service from Microsoft. It's been around a little while and people have been enjoying it for a little while and putting it through, it through its paces. It's a slick way to build and deploy and host your modern web apps. And when I say a modern web app, I'm talking about all of those JavaScript developers who are out there building Angular and Vue.js and React apps. I'm a Vue developer, um, but I'm coming also from the Angular world and I dabble in React a little bit. So it's a real pleasure to have a way to build what we call a SPA, a single page app, which um, is a way to build web apps using these modern JavaScript stacks. It's a clean way to manage your app and to manage its API. <laughs> Thanks, Cecil. Um, and um, it has a real nice ecosystem. It's a, ni a nice product team that will, um, that will be able to help you if you have any questions. So let's talk about how you can use Azure Static Web Apps to build um, your app and its API. So who am I? I'm a JavaScript developer, like I said, and um, I need some options. You know, I love options. I need some options to quickly develop my website on Azure and deploy that thing. So what if the website also comes with an API? So before I came to Microsoft, I've been developing um, mostly on the front end, but also in the database tier for uh, maybe, maybe 20 years. Um, <laughs> I need to get rid of these notifications. I'm just going to take one second and pause and quit Teams. There we go. No more distractions. Okay. So um, if I'm a JavaScript developer and I need options for using React or Angular or Vue to build the static web app, it's awesome. I can do this on the front end. But what if I also need an API? So this 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 interface that that might interface with um, a database or a, a data set somehow that I can use within my app. So before I came to Microsoft, I had never in my life made an API. And lo and behold, here we are bashing through creating APIs using static um, Azure Static Web Apps because it's all bundled together. You have your app in one folder and your API in another folder. And you can just easily uh, as much as that is a, 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 a tricky word to say, but honestly, it's not that bad to create an API and an app um, all together in one place with Azure Static Web Apps. So prior to Azure Static Web Apps, you were able to use app services, maybe with cobbling together an app service with Azure Functions, but this is all brings it together in one nice clean package, and that's Azure Static Web Apps. So what does it look like as you're building your app? What kind of folder structure are you looking at here? So as a Vue developer, I use the Vue CLI to scaffold myself a nice Vue app, and that cre creates something in an app folder. So that's as far as I'm going to get with my Vue CLI. So I would say Vue create app, and it would scaffold for me everything that's in this app folder. So it has, you know, it's uh, it's public folder where you keep your static assets. Uh, it's source folder where you're going to be actually writing your components with that will that will feed into your app. It has your package JSON file that contains all your dependencies. And then you also have an API folder. So your front end is going to go into the app folder, and your back end is going to go into this um, API folder, which I should have probably changed the slide here. But the API folder contains 
the, the back end, and it contains all of your functions that you're going to be using via your app folder and via those components that you put in your source folder. So this is your basic architecture. You have your app and your API, and then you have some GitHub actions, and I'll talk about those in a little bit. So you have decided you're going to build a nice website. I decided I would build for you an affirmation website. So I have a bunch of hard-coded affirmations in my API folder, and those are brought in ad hoc via the little function that I have in my API folder in my app folder. And so that is brought in and displayed on the front end in that app folder. So here's a, one of my components, and all it is is displaying an affirmation with uh, a nice looking uh, background color. and. Um, so this is a very basic app that I built you. It just has two pages. So it has its home page, and then you click a button, and it'll take you to your affirmation page, and it'll pull from the API a random affirmation. Right now, those affirmations are just a hard-coded array, but you could use the, your, your functions to query any kind of database. You know, I've hooked up my, my API to Cosmos DB, which is one of our um, nice free NoSQL databases that you can try. There's a nice free tier. You can give it a shot. Um, you could use it to, to use things like PlayFab. PlayFab is a nice service for if you're building a game, uh, and it's a terrific engine for, for games. Works very well. It's another nice service that you can try. Um, and all of this works beautifully in Visual Studio Code. So I hope that a lot of you have been taking a look at Visual Studio Code as your IDE, your, your integrated development environment. And the reason it's integrated is because it has a lot of extensions that you can use. And one of those extensions is the Azure extension. And one of those Azure extensions is the Azure Static Web Apps extension, which you can use to deploy and to manage your Azure Static Web Apps right from Visual Studio Code. So it's really, really a clean and nice experience. You build up the front end, and then you need to enable some routes. So you need to add one file called routes.json into your, for me as a view developer, I have to put it into a static folder. So it goes into my public folder that I showed you in the slide prior. You put this and you list out the routes that you need so that your SPA, your, um, your single page application, will understand the concept of routes. And that's always the sticking point with trying to deploy SPAs or single page apps into, uh, into these kind of services, because routes are tricky in these things. And it's not like you're going page to page with a huge refresh. You're actually taking a page and you're injecting code as you, as you use the router that's integrated into your app. So you need a nice way for your single page application to understand the concept of routes. So you need this little file and that is out there for you. At this point, you can start building up your backend and um, here's where you're going to use this generalized structure of Azure functions within your API folder. So remember, we have our app folder with the front end code. In the API, you can put a whole bunch of functions. Mine just has one function, and it's called, I believe it's called get affirmation. And all it does is it, um, is it pings this array, this constant, which is an array uh, called affirmations. And it's a long list of affirmations. And then it just says, I'm going to grab a random one of these 46 affirmations, and I'm going to display it. So it sends it back to the front end. So my front end is querying this local API and bringing it back in uh, to the front end so that you can see. So every time you refresh or you go back and forth and click, um, click the button to get a fresh affirmation, this function will run again and you can have, um, you can have a nice experience for your users. So the nice thing about this whole development experience is that, like I said, you're using Visual Studio Code and you have, um, you have a lot of tooling that's integrated into Visual Studio Code because it is a nice IDE for any kind of developer, especially a front-end developer. Um, and I would strongly advise you to install the Azure extension into Visual Studio Code so that you can leverage the magic of deploying um, Azure Static Web Apps using this um, extension. And the other thing that it allows you to do is within the Azure extension, there's Azure Functions um, functionality, and you can use this debugger right here, the little bug. Um, you can just click that and you can start running your, um, your API locally, and it will start listening on port 7071 um, and then so, so that will basically fire up your API so that you can start working with it. You'll start another terminal window for your front end so that you have your back end and your front end both running on localhost. 
Backend will be running on port 7071. Front end for me as a view developer, it runs on 8080. I think for other um, for other front end frameworks, there's other ports that are running. But here you can see that it's running on port 7071 on localhost. It hits the API folder and it looks for affirmation. So the name of this function is affirmation, and it's just grabbing that affirmation out of this large array. So like I said, you can you can build something way more complicated than this. Uh, we have um, I actually have um, a pretty serious app running against Cosmos DB. I have a couple of them. Um, and these are really great. It, it just is a very seamless way to use the various SDKs that are available to you as, um, as a JavaScript developer to, building, to be building your backend API and your front end, all using JavaScript and all within the same integrated development environment. I really like it. It really works nicely. And it's kind of comforting when you open up your IDE and you know where everything is. So that's really cool. So once you've got your back end running, you're going to fire up your front end on localhost. So like I said, for me, it runs on port 8080. You can see that in the URL and you'll test your app this way. So you would open up a new terminal and use your app's CLI to run. Um, for me, it's run uh, npm run serve and that fires up the view CLI and allows me to run my application. So um, I would encourage you, if you like to, if you're completely new to front-end development, take a look at uh, Vue.js if you're interested. It has a reputation as having a nice learning curve so that you can get into it. I'll give myself a little shout out. I am the founder and CEO of Vue Vixens. So if you're someone who identifies as a woman, we have workshops for you. We rebranded to be Frontend Foxes. So you can find us on frontendfoxes.org. We have a nice Slack channel where you can find mentoring and people who are um, like-minded people who will help you in your front-end uh, experience. We have React developers, Angular developers, Vue developers. Um, I think Svelte is coming along. That's another front-end framework. JavaScript people love to, to launch front-end frameworks. It's a hobby we have, but those are the three big ones. And, and if you would like to join us on Slack, you'll be able to find front-end folks to help you uh, in your journey. So that was a little segue. Just wanted to mention that. So frontendfoxes.org. Anyhow, so you're going to run your front end on localhost to test your app using your CLI, your command line interface, which you can do right from within Visual Studio Code. You can just type npm run serve and I'll show you how this works. So here's a little kind of grainy video. But what I am doing here is when I'm ready to deploy, I fire up that famous Azure extension for static web apps. And you can see static web apps preview. You can see that extension right there. I'm going to go ahead and give it some instructions on where I want it to deploy, to be deployed. So I'm going to say, OK, it's going to walk me through this wizard. So here it's asking for the path of the build output. For me, it's build. I'm in Boston. I want it to be um, deployed on the East Coast. So I set that to happen. And then I'm telling it which subscription to go to, giving a name for my new static web app. And I'm going to push to, I'm going to associate this web app with something I've already pushed to GitHub, which is called um, test app, I think. And then it's going to start asking me for some information on where it's going to find the code. And this is an important step because as you deploy your app on static um, Azure Static Web Apps, it's going to create for you a little file that's in a .github folder. And that's going to launch um, your um, deployment scripts. So that is another thing that's taken care of for you as you start deploying using Visual Studio Code. So this is a beautiful stack, right? You have Visual Studio Code. Everything is kind of like bundled up together. It's all in one place and taken care of for you. Thank goodness. So um, we are all set as front-end developers. So why GitHub? Um, well, it's important to have your code hosted in GitHub because that's where Azure Static Web Apps is looking for your build um, scripts. So it scaffolds out for you a little website for you to host your um, deployed app, and it gives you a little file that is being run in GitHub Actions. So in that little tab in GitHub where you have your code hosted, there's a little tab called Actions. And you can look at this and you can see all the deployments as they're happening. If there's any failures, it'll tell you what was wrong. Usually it's because it can't find a folder or something. Or you can, you can be happy and you can look at all your successes. And it's kind of cool because everybody can see this so they can all see all the changes and all the history of your app as you're deploying and deploying. So um, this is a really cool area where all of your build process is managed and it's all done by a GitHub Actions. So this beautiful integration between Visual Studio Code, 
GitHub, GitHub Actions, your front end code, your back end API. It's really a nice, nice ecosystem. I love it. So this is what that little file looks like that's scaffolded for you. Um, it's a GitHub Actions file. And um, every time you push to GitHub, your API and your app are going to be rebuilt. This file is going to kick in and a build process will launch. So, um, and you can control that experience a little bit with this file, but um, it, it, you can, you can, you know, always look at this file to see what exactly is going on in your build process and you can tweak it a little bit. If you want to try the app that I built for you, it's at aka.ms slash my dash affirmations. I think in, in this pandemic, we all need affirmations. Um, even my cat needs affirmations. You know, I, I, I pat her every evening and I tell her she's a very, very good cat because she is, and she needs an affirmation too. So I call those cat affirmations, but that's, that's beside the point. So building, hosting, deploying, GitHub Actions, all that good stuff, that's nice. But wait, there's more. So excitingly, there's more bundled up in, um, in Azure Static Web Apps, and you can see these on the Azure portal. So you can check out um, the side nav bar. There's a configuration settings. There's the ability to launch custom domains. So when, when you're ready to truly launch your website, you handle it there. Your functions as you develop them are gonna be listed out. Uh, your environments are all set up here. So you could have, um, if you would have a push to GitHub from a branch, that would create a development environment that then you would um, delete when you delete the branch. So it's kind of like a nice way to test if you don't want something right to go right to production. There's role management for um, handling the, the, the people and the things that they're doing in your, in your application. And there's some other stuff, box and export template. But the cool thing that I really enjoy and I really use is this configuration piece here. Um, you can store tokens in this area. So in this example, I have my view app PlayFab secret key. So this was an app that was um, connected to PlayFab, which is that game environment that I talked about. So here, I don't want to um, release all of my API keys and all of those secret things that people really don't need to know. I don't want to release those into the wild. Um, I don't want to put that open in GitHub. So I store them here in the Azure Static Web App Portal. I pop it into here, view app play that secret key. You know, I'm not going to see that hidden value because it's hidden and it's secret. And that is pulled in to my, um, to my view application. Um, it's process.env open bracket view app play web secret key. And it, and it knows because it has this connection to static web apps that that's where that secret token is. So that's a really nice um, thing to keep all of your secrets actually secret. Very helpful. And, but wait, there's even more. I feel like I'm advertising, but I'm not advertising. I just really like this service. Um, one of the nastiest things that front-end developers have to do is handle um, authentication. Hand I, it's not something I enjoy doing, but it's actually not too bad. It's pretty easy using Azure Static Web Apps with a little bit of code because it has built in an authentication routine. It has social auth built in. So you can have folks logging in with Twitter and storing a token, logging in with Facebook, Google, um, and it works nicely. I have this working very well on a different app. This is a uh, archive that I was building and you're you're searching a database and saving your searches. And you do that by logging in and you can see a um, sidebar, but it's really just a few lines of code here. All it is, is um, you're, in, you're using this auth method, which is built into static web apps. And it's really not that much to, um, to get this moving. So it's um, a great way to authenticate your users. I really like it because I hate writing auth scripts. One more thing, one more thing. Um, I was mentioning this before. This is your environment management area. So you can um, manage all of the deployments that are being handled by your scripts. So um, when you want to scaffold a staging site, you would create a branch and push that with, with its own uh, action file. And that will create a staging site, like a temporary staging site and push it uh, to GitHub so that you can test your changes. You can get rid of the branch, you can get rid of this environment, um, but just in case you don't want something to go straight to um, straight to production, you can have a branch and that will be uh, viewed on this, um, on this separate site, kind of temporary staging site. Very helpful when you're just not quite sure that everything's gonna work the way it's supposed to, uh, which happens 24 seven with the developers. So um, this is something that's very helpful. So at this point, I will scooch over and maybe you can, oops, 
maybe you can, um, let's see, there we go. Maybe you can follow along with me. If you go to aka.ms slash my dash affirmations, you can get your very own affirmation. Let's see what my affirmation looks like. Ah, you make a difference in the world by simply existing in it. I feel very, I feel, I feel, I feel good. It's nice. Let's get one more. You know more than you think. Ah, this is perfect for this conference because I know all of you know a lot more than you think you do. So um, it's a lovely affirmation for you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for um, making a career switch, if that's what you're thinking of doing. Um, I actually was trained as a French teacher. So um, I made a career switch about 20 years ago. Um, I miss I miss my classroom, but I'm on the academic team and I still get to deal with students. So sometimes you can bring your passions from your previous career into your into your technical career. So that's a really kind of powerful place to be. And I wanted to um, slide on over to this area because this is how I have that app running on localhost. So you can see here it's running on 8080. I have two terminals here that I fired up prior to this talk. So that's the front end and here's the back end. And you can see every time I was hitting that route to get my affirmation, it would you know notate that here in the um, in this area in the terminal. And this is the extension. This is what it looks like. So you have your static web, uh, web app extension. Uh, it has all of my subscriptions here. I could create a new function within my app. I could refresh the whole thing. I could create a new static web app com completely, and that would scaffold um, all of the pieces for me that, that I need in terms of um, the deployments. So that's really helpful. Um, so that is the Azure. I can just show you how the folder structure goes. You've seen that already. So this is the API folder, and here is the functions. This is that affirmation function, and all you're doing is editing this index file. And here's those, how many is it? 46 affirmations. And they're just hard coded in here. This is the simplest dead simple example, but um, you'll probably create something a lot more complicated. Um, this is just for demo purposes. So that's the API folder and the app folder has all of this good, nice view content here. So here's my source folder with my assets, not much going on in there. Um, and affirmations is where, um, where all of the magic happens. So this is that ribbon class that you saw with the affirmations. So home route, affirmations route. Here's that routes JSON file that I mentioned earlier. And, and um, I just want to open up the GitHub workflow file. So here it is. Um, and you can see how all you have to do really once this is scaffolded for you is just verify that it is properly selected the app folder as your front end location and the API location as API and your artifact location to dist. For, so for me, uh, as a view developer, dist is my final destination. I believe for Angular, it's something like prod. It's been a long time since I've uh, talked to Angular. But uh, lots and lots of good stuff here. You can add things to this. This is not locked down in any way. You can, you know, it's watching for pushes. So every time I push to GitHub, uh, we'll get um, some, some building happening. Whenever there's a pull request, things are happening. And um, just overall, it's a great development development experience. And um, let me go back. Okay. So honestly, the bottom line is that Azure, St Azure, Azure Static Web Apps are web developers' dream come true. It gives you easy and free deployments. It gives you this beautiful GitHub integration. It works really nicely with the modern JavaScript stack. And I've been blabbering a lot about the modern JavaScript stack. But as of Ignite, we had a new product release. And this is really exciting. So you can also write your API with Blazor WebAssembly and .NET functions. So this is very, very nice in case you don't want to write your, um, your that middle tier that's talking to a database with JavaScript. You can use, AP, uh, you can use Blazor, you know, WebAssembly, uh, and .NET especially for that API. And I would just encourage you to visit SWA Framework, aka MS, SWA Frameworks. There's a really excellent learn module by my colleague, John Papa. And you can pick, it's kind of choose your own adventure. You can choose React, View, Svelte, or um, Angular. Go through and go through this learn, uh, this learn uh, module. And it's a great way to learn static web apps. 
So I just encourage you to hang out with us and ask questions. Um, I'm sure you've been doing that all today as you learn from Microsoft developers on a variety of tech concepts. Lots to listen to on Learn TV. If you listen to Cecil a couple talks ago, he is going on Twitch tomorrow, I believe on the Microsoft developer channel. Um, double check with me on this, maybe not, but he is talking about uh, Azure Static Web Apps as well. So if you want um, more information about this, he's gonna be talking about this um, live. And uh, you can always grab that free certification um, with the Cloud Skills Challenge. So I wonder how many folks are doing this Cloud Skills Challenge. It's, it's a great way to learn. Um, you are going to be able to live stream on October 20th on Twitch for Azure Fundamentals and then Power Platform Fundamentals on October 27th. So um, getting close to Halloween there, but it's not scary at all to do a Cloud Skills Challenge. And um, I'm proud of you. I want to just affirm that I know that you will have an awesome career. Tech is a really cool place um, for all kinds of people, not just, um, not, not, you know, you don't have to love Star Wars. You know, you, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to love uh, the, the kind of typical tech things. You can be that fashion designer. You can be that French teacher. You can, um, you can be um, all kinds of, uh, of, of a person and, and find a place uh, in this field. I think it's a terrific place. It's certainly been good for me. So um, thank you so much for listening and give Static uh, Web Apps a try. Static Web Apps, there you go. Here's a different route, but SDC slash Static Web Apps. And just do the learn module for me and tell me how you like it. So thank you. <laughs>